Alright guys, so the first thing you have to figure out when you're going to catch a bass is the spot. For a spot, there's no better place to start than a small pond. Um, in small ponds, fish are usually more condensed because it's a smaller body of water. And ponds can usually have a uh, good population of bass in them. But not, not all ponds are going to be that way. Um, some ponds are better than others. Um, you just got to adjust to that and uh, you'll figure it out along the way. Um, a good way to find farm ponds, if you don't have like aunts or uncles or whatever that have a pond, you can always go on Google Earth. Google Earth is um, a resource that I use a lot to find fishing spots and different things like that. And uh, when you're going to look for a spot, try to find ponds that have uh, somewhat clearer water, the better. Um, usually that means more oxygen is in the water, the fish are more happy. Um, more vegetation if there's grass. If there's weeds on the edge of the water, um, lily pads, anything like that, that is uh, plants that produce oxygen for the bass in the water, and uh, the bass are going to be more active that way. The deeper the pond, the more oxygen, because that's going to make the water cooler. You know, um, if the water has uh, a rocky bottom, that also produces more oxygen. Oxygen, oxygen, oxygen is a uh, very key thing. But just because there's not vegetation, doesn't have a rocky, rocky bottom, and the water's not clear, doesn't mean that there's not uh, active bass in the water. It just really helps out the situation, and uh, you're likely to have a better fishing experience. And so you've got your spot, and uh, the next thing you have to figure out is equipment. For equipment, um, first thing you're going to need is a rod and reel. For a rod and reel, um, your best option for beginners is going to be a six foot. Uh, medium fast action spinning rod. Um, medium action is basically where it has a stiff enough backbone to where you can haul in those fish and you can throw heavier baits um, pretty easily. And it fast tip that it's got on it is just a real sensitive tip where you can detect bite real easily so you can cast far. Um, I would like to pair it up with a 2500 size reel or a 3000 size. I really like to stay within that range. Um, it's just a really easily um, used setup. It's really easy to use. You can throw about any bait on this. You can throw um, crank baits, anything, any type of baits that I'll uh, get into here in a minute that I'll start talking about. But uh, for a line, monofilament is a really good option for beginners just because it floats. It's clear enough to where you can fish it in all different uh, types of water. Got stretch. It's got enough stretch in the line where you can uh, use it in all different applications and different things like that. Because fluorocarbon is not strength isn't as good just because it's real. It doesn't have a whole lot of stretch and braids the same way. I'm not really going to get into those lines today. Um, just going to be giving you information you need to know. So monofilament is going to be your best bet. Um, Ten. I would actually probably say 8 to 15 pound test, just because you can really use that in about all different applications. Um, Alright, so once you've got your rod and reel, you're at the spot, um, the next thing you got to figure out is your um, lures, bait and tackle, um, etc. you got to figure those things out. Um, for bass, when I go to ponds, I like to keep it pretty simple. I usually bring a backpack and I'll bring a smaller tackle box like this, and that usually treats me just fine. Um, for ponds, when you're fishing different lures, one thing you got to take into account is water clarity, um, vegetation, the environment of the water. When you're fishing any lure, try to find cover, like I said. Um, try to find areas of vegetation where those fish are going to be gathered, those fish are going to be hanging out, feeding on bait fish, um, and your lure will be swimming right by and they'll swipe at it. Um, so yeah, once you've got your spot and all that, you got to figure out your lure. So, um, what I like to use is a smaller shallow diving crankbait, um, small compact jigs, smaller spinnerbaits, top waters like a top water frog. Both those cranks are good. Um, and soft plastics, my favorite soft plastic happens to be the wacky rig sinko. Looks pretty weird, but uh, it works really good. It flutters down in the water, goes real slow, real subtle action. Any size fish will bite it and that uh, usually fits me really well, so yeah. Um, for shallow diving cranks, I like to 
bounce this off cover. I like to dive it because it dives down in the water. All you gotta do is cast it out, reel it along, and uh, it'll dive down and bounce off hard cover and things. So I don't really like to fish out of vegetation because it has those trouble hooks, you know, that are pretty prone to snag. Um, jigs, jigs like this, especially a black and blue jig. Darker color jigs and darker color baits in general work better in murkier water just because they stand out more and they have more of a silhouette under the water. Um, when the water's clear, you're going to want to use a jig that's like this. It's more green pumpkin, more natural colors. Um, I'll fish a jig basically anywhere. Um, I'll fish it along the bank, um, around the hard cover, different things like that. Or those fish might be feeding on crawfish or uh, smaller creatures like that. So, uh, one of my favorite baits and a really good bait for beginners. This is probably one of the best beginner baits all year round would be a small compact spinner bait like this. You can fish in open water around vegetation, hardcover, etc. You can fish this anywhere. It's a really good bait to use for beginners. And top water, my favorite top water baits, top water frog. I usually only use this when there's like uh, maybe some moss, lily pads, that sort of thing. Vegetational frogs might hang out during the summer months. I really don't fish this during uh, the fall, like right now. Um, I'll fish a spook or I'll fish a uh, Top water popper, but we're, we're really not going to get into that right now. Um, but yeah, for a uh, for the wacky rig, I like to fish this parallel to the bank, really anywhere besides in areas where it can get snagged easily, just because it's uh, pretty easily um, get snagged just because it doesn't have a uh, weed guard or anything like that. So, uh, but I love that bait. I've caught a lot of bass on this, and it's feeding very well. Yeah, you've got your rod and reel, you got your spot and uh, you got your equipment and uh, now you're ready to catch a